All right, Twister Christian back with part three. What we're going to discuss is you're getting ready to head towards the bank. You got your dinars, you're excited, and you, you've, are, you already know where you're going right now. I think that when this hits the news, there's going to be a lot of people who will probably – there's going to be some instances somewhere around the world – and probably with the United States, that people will probably be looking for people going into the bank with, with a box, a suitcase, anything. So I know that when I go, I am not going to be taking all of my dinars, especially depending on the rate, right? If the rate hits one to one first, I'm not taking very much, right? I might take, you know, a uh, um, hundred thousand dinar. It is just all. This is all going to depend on how things happen uh, my bank is not that far from here uh, from where I live so when I do go regardless if it's three to one or one to one I'm not going to be taking all of my dinars in I want to make sure that when I go that nothing happens to me on the way there or up to the stairs going up into the bank I want to make sure that I get everything settled first get the accounts open uh, get uh, get everything straightened out with the bank and and make sure that I'm able to make my exchange safely. Right now, when this happens, your bank might have you do something differently. They might have you make an appointment. They might have you uh, come in during certain hours. I don't know exactly how all this is going to go down, but each bank might have individual things because this is going to be huge, right? This is going to be huge. So they know the banks know that these people are going to be coming in. So that so they want to be prepared so that you can feel comfortable, so you can feel safe. And you guys need to feel comfortable and safe. So if some of you have like, you know, 10, 15 million dinars, you would be a fool to take all your dinars on the first trip when you go. Because if something was to happen and you lose it all, then it's all gone. So some of you will have to, some of you live in towns, live in smaller towns where there is not a bank near you, right? Some of you will have to travel 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, and in some places, uh, maybe even a couple hours. I got a friend who says he has to, he's going to have to travel well over an hour to go to a bank to exchange when it happens, right? Now that's going to be the scary thing, right? Because if you take all your dinars with you, and you're going to that bank, you're gonna have this, you're gonna have this fear kind of over you driving to the bank with all your dinars. That's why I don't recommend you that you take them all with you. You want to get everything set up first. Now, I believe that it's gonna be just like a normal exchange process. Right? There ain't gonna be there's not gonna be any eight hundred numbers to call. You're not gonna be giving your dinars for somebody to come by and pick up or anything like that. I believe you're just gonna be able to go in and make your exchange. All right, so you're sitting down. They're going to ask you probably a lot of questions. They're going to probably ask you if you're going to want to invest in other different types of accounts, you know, CDs, you know, whatever the case. And they may even try to get you to sign NDAs. You don't want to sign anything except that you want to start a brand new checking account and a brand new savings account and however many other accounts that you want to do. Because you're going to need at least one account. You're going to need an account to do all. All of your online purchasing, right? I would not have, I mean, you might even want to even start a separate bank with a different bank, right? And where that's funded with just a certain amount, you know, whether it's 10,000, 15,000, and you go through and you're making purchases on Amazon, you're making purchases here, there, everywhere else, right? So you want to make sure that uh, you get, you. this is why you have to figure all this out, because you don't want the bulk of your money attached to accounts that you're going to be doing like a lot of purchasing with. So like I said, I believe it's just going to be like a normal exchange that, that you're just going to be able to go in, whether they whether the bank forces you to make an appointment or not, and you're going to be able to go in and make your exchange. Now some of you, you need to be careful when you're approaching the bank, okay? Physically, I'm talking about physically, right? Because when this hits... You're going to have a lot of people scrambling like, oh, man, the banks are saying that people need to come in and this and that. Trust me, somewhere, 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 
somebody is going to be waiting to try to to try to get at your because they're going to think you have. You might not even you might you might be just a general customer going into the bank and get robbed because you think that this person might think that you might have dinars to exchange. So that's my plan. I'm going to have brand new bank accounts. I'm probably more than likely going to get another bank account somewhere else once I have the cash. That way I can I can have a separate account for all my online purchasing. And of course, I don't try to make online purchasing. I just like going into the store and just do the shopping anyway. You know, it's right there. I don't have, you know, I, I don't have to worry about putting my information online and doing all that. Some of you really like to do that. Do like a lot of online shopping. Make sure it's not attached to your main bulk account. Now, the other thing that I do recommend doing, and this is just a recommendation, because some of you are going to run out of money very fast. And it might, some of you might take a couple years or a year. But set aside to like one of those, you know, CD accounts that you can't touch for a whole year. And depending on how many dinars you have, you might just want to put away something into a CD account that you just, is just, it's just for safekeeping. You can't touch it. You can't get into it. You can't just go to the bank and say, and pull this out, right? They do have accounts like that. And so I do recommend maybe looking at that because you guys don't, if you, some of you who will put yourselves in financial trouble, you're going to need something to fall back on, right? Hopefully that these other wells will start coming through. Some of your other investments will start coming through to the point to where, you know, that you're able to manage your money uh, decently. All right. So we've done that. We went to the bank. We have our dinars. We got our new cards on the way. Now, of course, I still have I will still have my old bank account. And when I do exchange in order for me to get some of the things that I need to get, I'm going to have to take cash out and put it in my in my old bank account. So that way I could go ahead and make my computer purchases. Right. Because what did I say on the day of you need to change your passwords to mostly everything that you have, right? And then when you switch over, when you buy a new phone, a new computer, a new iPad, new uh, all new computer equipment, once you get it all set up and going, you're going to change your password again on that new system, but then you're also going to separate if your social media email and information and telephone numbers associated with, with what you currently have now. On your banking information, you're going to have the new phone number, you're going to have a new in encrypted email. And if you don't want to use an encrypted email, just make sure it's one of the safer emails that are out there. Right. And you switch that over and you separate it from that from your social media. Right. And then the next thing is when you've got home and you got everything set up, you got all your bank account information, all your new um, account numbers and everything else. Right. There are different sites out there that have like credit protection. Right now, you know that some of these credit agencies have already have already been hacked, but then yet they offer credit protection. Right. So just as it, this is just an example. Right. You have uh, LifeLock. Right. LifeLock is um, I've heard a lot of good things about them. This is just an example where you can sign up. You can make sure that nobody can get to your information. Right. I mean, they help you. You know, they alert you if there's any anything going on strange with with your uh, social security number and your credit score, right? And there are other there are other uh, places that do the same thing. I just wanted to give you an example of something that you would need to pay for to help keep your credit secure and make sure that you're protected. All right. Now, after you do, after you've done your full exchange, okay, and that's just when you want to make sure you got that you got that taken care of. So now, for those of you who have not turned in all of your dinars now now then is the time to go back to the bank at some point during that week within that week and exchange the rest of your dinars now there's going to be a lot of craziness right like i told you there might be people waiting at the banks you're going to have family and friends and everything else you know people may try to and this this is the other thing is that if you have people who live with you who are not family their friends or even relatives you don't get along with and they know where your dinars are at, uh, you probably need to move them out from where they're at. Some people will go to uh, a bank and a safety deposit box. I don't know about that. I just know that uh, 
I don't want to have to go to the bank and go to my safety to deposit box and all my dinars are gone, right? Because you don't know. And so for, so, for, so for some of you who do live far away, um, I would recommend that you make you have some kind of protection, right? I'm not telling you to, to conceal and carry and all that, but you want to make sure that when you get to the bank that you are safe. And I'm not trying to make people feel like they're panicky or be fear, but it is the truth. I've known people who have died over $5, and no matter where you're at, where you, what city you live in, what state you live in, somebody has probably died over less. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get the credit protection. Then we're going to go back to the bank, right? And don't be carrying no suitcase, a bag, right? You can have them all neatly tucked into your shirt. You know, you can wear a suit, you know, and for, for the ladies, uh, I would not be carrying, uh, you know, any kind of purse, that somebody can just come and just snag right off your shoulder. That's like one of the biggest ways that uh, women get their purses stolen. Is they just get, you know, somebody just drives up and snags their purse and then they're on their way. And, and there you go with all your dinars. That's why you're not going to go to the bank with all of your dinars the first time around. All right. So now you have, you've, you, you've gone for your second exchange. You've, you've got everything in there, and of course you're going to go talk to your tax person, right? You're going to make sure that, you know, I can't, I don't, I don't know that much about taxes and, and tell you how to do taxes and all that stuff. Just make sure that you hire somebody very well and they know what they're doing, so that, so that the tax, the taxes on your investment are minimized. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Now. The next thing is, is don't go buck wild spending. Some of you will. Some of you have a lot. You're going to, some of you probably need to get something out of your system because you've been waiting for so long. And see, that's the problem. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting so long. And then you, you're going to get it. And then you, I'm gonna, then you just go out, you go out, buy this house, you go out, buy this car, you go out, buy this, you go out, buy that. No, you want to protect yourself. Because the first thing you guys are going to buy is all brand new equipment. If you're driving now in a car, you don't need a brand new car right now, right? Some of you do need a new car, but if you have a decent running car, you don't need to buy a car, not even within that first week of it revaluing. Now, these are a lot of the things that you're going to have to consider even after things have changed, right? Are you going to move? Some of you are probably going to have to need to hide because you guys have overpromised so much, and uh, some of you are going to need to hide. But some of you are debt. You need to make sure that you take care of your debts and don't just. If you owe forty thousand dollars to say student loans, you just don't say, "Hey, oh, okay, here, here's the forty thousand dollars." You negotiate every debt that you have. Negotiate every debt that you have. Before you make payments on your debts, right? Because you're going to save money, right? So the money that you save, you can reinvest it into these other wells that we're going to be discussing by the end of this week, right? Then depending on whether or not if you're going to decide to move from where you're at, you know, are you moving to another state? Do you have, or is there a place that you want to go? You know, you want to. Those are all the things that you you're going to need to consider, because uh, some people will. Uh, you'll be moving to a whole nother place, a whole nother area. The I'm pretty sure when this takes place, the housing market is going to boom. But don't be a person that ends up busting because you bought too, you bought a house that was too expensive. See, some of you are going to end up buying a house, right? And you're still going to have to make payments because you can't because you can't afford because you didn't buy enough dinars to pay off the entire house without leaving you with anything. So don't make your boom turn into a bust, right? And when you do, uh, and like I said, there's going to be a lot of hysteria surrounding this probably for some time. And because you have posted on social media, you have family and friends, you know, and what I recommend is making sure that your house is fully secure. 24-hour security cameras, right? That's one of the things that I'm going to do. You know, how are you going to protect yourself and your family, Look, if you go to YouTube right now 
and you type in security uh, uh, security cam break-ins, just, you just type in those words, there are some crazy people out there. They know you're in there. They know the cameras are there, and they're trying to break down the door. In groups of people, they got masks on, they got guns, they got all that stuff, right? So you're going to have to learn how to protect yourself because you have instantly come into wealth. And if all it takes is for one person who you don't know, who knows somebody who knows you. I will tell you about a case of a woman who was charged. She was a teenager. She was charged with murder. She was she worked for somebody. She worked for an older guy who had a lot of money laying around the house he had he he was a pretty wealthy individual. She told her friends about it, her teen, her teenage friends, and they say, "You know what? We're and we're going to rob this place." So they go there. Uh, she drops them off. The three kids never returned because the sons because the father's son was there. And when they tried to break in, all three ended up in the grave. All three of those teenagers ended up in the grave, and they end up charging her with their with those uh, three other teenagers' death. So it doesn't take very much for somebody who knows you to find out that what you have. It could be a, a friend of a friend, a friend of a family member. Oh yeah, they uh they invested in that dinar, man. He's got like he ended up he had like ten million. He like making ten million. A lot of people don't have good intentions out there. So you need to make sure that you're, that, you're, that you're protected in the beginning of all this thing, when all this takes place. I don't care. You have the security people come out and they install it. You know, two, you know, the next day, two days later, you have that all taken care of. Hopefully, you didn't tell your neighbors that you invested in the dinar, right? And they didn't. They chose not to, right? You got <laughs> got to make sure you you... Or you trust your neighbors too as well. You know, did you tell them? You know, some people are really friendly with their neighbors. So some of you will have to move. Some of you are in apartments. Some of you are renting. And I would recommend, I would definitely recommend that, of course, you do your research. Because uh, some of these things you're not going to want to do. You can't, you know, put up a security system if you live in an apartment. Right? So when this takes place, you need to figure out exactly what you're going to do. With your life, where are you going to go? Where are you going to move? Can you afford to buy a house? You know, and whether or not if you're keeping your job, even though you might have a couple million dinars, you have, you, you know, you're renting right now, but then, you know, you have a job too. So these are a lot of different factors you have to consider. You have to really think about uh, in this whole thing. And one very important thing is that if you guys go out and get a brand new car, right, or any car, the first thing is do not personalize your license plates somebody who knows you they see you driving in a car with personal plates it's not going to take long they can find out where you live and there's and there are websites out there on the internet you could you can pay to find out where somebody lives right and most of our information is out there anyway so whatever you do do not personalize your license plates that's a big no-no that's a very big no-no and if you do go buy a car, don't be one of those dumb rich people, right? You want to always negotiate. And you never buy at the beginning of the month. You always wait the last week of the month. And I'll tell you why. Because when you're buying a brand new car, every when you go to a dealership, you see all these brand new cars out there. That dealership has to pay a lot fee for every one of those cars, and so that's why they're always in a rush towards the end of the month because it's not about just the salesman getting the, the sale. But it's also about getting those cars off the lot so the dealership doesn't have to pay that lot fee anymore. Now, it might work differently in your state as far as, far as different things. But at least try to negotiate. Sometimes, yes, you want to – now, when you do go to the dealership, yes, you might want to be a blessing. I have – when I worked for Lincoln, there were people that came in. I want this color car. Uh, I want to, I want this uh, I want this navigator I want it in in this specific color here's the check but you also want to, anything that you're buying majorly you do want to try to negotiate and you always buy at the end of the month when you're buying a brand new car doesn't matter with a with a used car that only affects 
This only the the dealerships paying the lot fee only affects brand new cars. Because when you're going to buy a used car, and I mean they they don't have to worry about lot fees and stuff like that. At least in the state that that I'm in, right? And and uh, and also too, the best time of the year to buy a brand new car is between September and January because that's when all the next year cars continue to come out and there are different specials behind the scenes money that you guys don't know about that the salesman can take off so they can sell the car so I just wanted to give you a little tidbit uh, information on that as far as because these are things you're going to do right away right you're going to be buying most most people probably a lot of dinar holders right now when one, one of the first major purchases they're going to make is going to be what it's going to be a car so whatever you do when you get your car uh, don't get personalized plates don't get personalized plates and don't get you don't as son i know some of you are looking to get your dream car i've known people who've got their dream car and they would they had to sell it within a couple years right they wanted this corvette dream car they were loving it for the first year right and then it started getting expensive to to maintain and now they don't have their dream car anymore and now they wish they would have never got it in the first place I don't want to see you guys in that position right there's a lot of people who have a lot of money who don't you know they're driving Hondas you know they're driving Fords they're not driving Mercedes and they're not driving you know because they they don't want people to know what they have because this this here is about you just need to make sure that you're just you're putting yourself in a position at least for the at, at least a first good year that you're safe and sound you don't have a lot of family members bothering you, you don't have a lot of friends bothering you you don't have people coming to your door asking for money you know old flames old friends all kind of stuff right your first year you want to be able to sit back and enjoy a little bit of, of what you have be able to give like you're supposed to give and be able to what invest like you can invest because listen right Kim Clement talked about the eight wells so if the dinar is one of those wells you want to make sure that you can invest not just in in if any of those wells come up now you want to be able to invest in those other wells too but the wells that come after the dinar because we have talked about other currencies that could revalue right the moment the moment that those currencies revalue I've told you in another video the moment those currents the moment the dinar revalues guess what not only am I changing all my passwords but I'm gonna go look and see which currencies that I think that are going to change in value that haven't changed in value and guess what I'm gonna do I'm gonna invest you know I'll have enough to where I could say I can I could take a thousand for this one a thousand for that one a thousand for this one a thousand for that one a thousand for that one and I'm I will be able to do that so that's gonna be one of the things that you're gonna be able to need to do is make sure that you are in a position and make sure that you're ready to be able to purchase other currencies other stocks right you want to be able to put yourself in a position right because there are other wells that if, if this the NAR brings this type of well brings this type of return imagine what the other seven wells could bring don't be one of those people who ends up having a whole bunch of a dinar and then you're broke and then now you can't invest in any more wells and I think that's very important because I, I listened to to Johnny from currency 365 and Benny about you know a lot of the people that are going to be broke after this happens you know uh, within the year two years three years and a lot of people are going to be sad and going to be unhappy because some of you when you when this takes place some of you are going to walk away you're not going to think about any other wells you're not going to be thinking about doing anything else and then you're going to try to come back and the other wells will have will have already taken off you won't have any extra money to invest into other wells so that's that's my plan okay I plan on going into the bank with not all of my dinars get all my accounts set up whatever whichever banks I want to get them all set up at once I once once I get back home right I'm gonna uh, once I once I leave the bank I'll make all my purchases of all my computer equipment when I get everything set up 
I'm going to change all my emails, right? I'm going to change I'm going to change all my passwords. Now, I know that sounds like it's a lot of work, but for those who do this, you're going to fully protect yourself cuz some of you are only going to halfway halfway do this. But I'm I'm telling you from the standpoint of fully protecting yourself completely. You got everything set up. You got your as the example, you got your life lock. You've already you've already uh, you know you've already called the security people to come out and put cameras up or however you do it. And for those of you who have to travel a long distance to get to your bank, like I said, please don't uh, take all your dinars to the bank at once. Don't take all your currency at once. All right, and make sure that also too that you hire a tax person that can that's going to be very good with how he treats your investment. Right. So you can be so you can minimize that tax. So now that you're at home and you've, you've done all this, you had and you've exchanged your second dinars. Now you have to be able to live. Right. You're going to be dealing with family members. You're going to be dealing with the church and your giving because now it's time. You've you've put away so much into a CD account that you can't touch. You you know you you're starting to pay all your debts and you're negotiating all your debts. You're negotiating the rest of the payment on your house, right? But you also need to remember to make sure to leave enough to invest into the other wells. All right? Because the first thing is you need to have to this is the this is the first thing you have to protect your life and the life of your family and to protect yourself online. I'm going to get a little bit more detail about settling your church. So we're going to deal a little bit about that. You guys don't want to get used by people in your church or by your pastor or by your leader. So I hope this has been beneficial uh, for you. Um, if you guys like, uh, check out the Patreon and the PayPal. The links are below in the description. So I appreciate uh, all, uh, any and all donations right now. That helps me to keep me going and also keeps me encouraged too as well. Twisted Christian out.